This is how to change the oil on a BMW S1000RR or similar machine. Before I start the process, I want to run the bike a little bit just to get the oil inside warm. You'll notice I had the rear wheel moving and the transmission engaged as well. This helps get all the oil in the train, the engine, and everything warm enough that it'll easily drain everything out. I didn't take it all the way up to operating temperature 160, 70. I took it up to about 115. That's good enough. I'm not looking to hot boil my hand or anything. I just want to get it warm enough to drain easily. This particular bike has safety wire on the oil plug per the race rules. So the first thing I need to do is snip that wire off. If for some reason you forget that you just had the bike running, the exhaust or something else hot will soon remind you. This bike takes a 14 millimeter socket on the oil plug. Each bike may be a little different. I try to get it broke loose with the wrench first. Then make sure you get your drain pan under it. Don't lose the plug into the bucket somehow. And also don't make a mess on your floor. Keeping the rear end on a stand will help give you a little bit more clearance if you have kind of a high pan like this. And there's the oil and there's the plug. You'll always want to look at the end of the plug. It's magnetic, so if you see a ton of shavings on the end of it, that's a bad sign. Um, just kind of do a quick inspection and wipe it off clean before you put it back in. While the oil's draining, you want to take this lower left panel off. You can see the filter is right in there, so we got to remove this panel for access. You basically have a few fasteners here, one there, I believe there might be one or two in here, and then the ones along the bottom, and then that piece should pop right off. I like to take the bottom ones off first, so I can kind of hold it and then drop that off. And put that panel somewhere safe, we're not going to step on it. Now there's the filter we want to get off. Now we can better see the filter we want to remove. Because it's a bit of a tight fit, I had to grind this down a little bit thinner to try to get between the filter and the pipes. Now let's see if it'll fit. Perfect. Now you just pull it up, move your oil pan up a little bit to make sure it catches whatever oil falls. Okay. And this is gonna make a fucking mess. Just oil, it's not like it's white claw, it's not gonna hurt anything. Not sure if you can see it, but that oil is gonna drip from the filter right onto your headers here. You definitely wanna get that all cleaned off with simple green or something before you start the bike again. Or it'll burn that, I don't know if it would actually cause a fire, but it possibly could, so just make sure that's all clean. Wipe all this surface off, the threads, meeting sealing surface, all that old oil out of there so you get a good seal with your new filter. Looks like everything is done draining. So I'm gonna scoop the pan out, that out of the way. When you get your new filter from BMW, you should also get a new plug ring. And that's basically, if you look at your plug, you pull that one off and you put a new one on. That's a crush gasket, and so you always want to replace that to make sure it seals right. Now that I have the new crush gasket on the drain plug, I'm gonna put that back into the engine. Start with it hand tight. Just barely snug with the wrench. And now I'm gonna get the torque wrench out and get it to the proper uh, 28 Newton meters, I believe. Get the torque wrench out. 28 Newton meters exact. 
In the past, I always used the regular BMW stock filter. This is probably what I bought when I still had my 10 engine in it. Uh, what I was recommended to use now is this Malloy one, the OC619, and it's for the 17, or sorry, 18 engine that's in there. And then I've got exactly three and a half liters of oil to go in it. It's just the standard uh, five weight Ford SAE is recommended for this engine. And I've got three full ones and one of them at half. We want to minimize how long the engine runs completely dry of oil. So in order to make it as least painful for the engine as we can, we want to pour a little bit of oil in the filter. And then we also want to take some of that oil and rub it around the gasket up here so that it gets a nice seal to it. Now we're going to take that filter with some oil in it and a nice oiled gasket at the top and very carefully thread it onto the threaded stem coming out of the engine. Do not cross thread those. Be very careful. It should go on really easy. Now there are probably torque specs for the filter to put it on. I'm not going to be able to get a torque wrench on the end of this anyway. I've always just done it where I put it on as hand tight as I can. You don't want to overdo it and squish that gasket out. And obviously you want it tight enough to not leak. So I've always done just hand tight. And then obviously once you start it up, you want to make sure you're not leaking or anything. Now, before we go any further, I want to clean all this out really well to make sure that all that oil is off the exhaust. Just using some simple green. Get any oil residue off, not only to keep it from burning on your exhaust, but also if you do see some oil drip and you want to know if it's from the process you just did, you know, do you have it not tight enough? Anything like that. Wipe it off real good. Now that everything's tight and installed, time to pull this oil filler cap and fill with oil. Get a funnel, stick it in there and start filling it with your three and a half liters of oil. Just poured one liter in. Before I go any further, I'm just checking out the floor to make sure I don't have any leaks before I put the other three or two and a half in. Looking good, I'll put the rest in. Three and a half liters in. Make sure the O-ring looks good around the cap. And reinsert that. Get my wrench so I can tighten that. Now I'll reinstall that panel that I've got it filled and everything's looking good. No leaks. Panel reinstalled. If your plug was safety wired before, you're gonna need it safety wired for safety or for some kind of race event. Then make sure you don't forget to redo that at the end of the job either. With that complete, all you have to do is take it out now, ride it, and then once you've ridden it a few miles, again, make sure that there's no leaks underneath here. Keep watching that for a while. And then most bikes will have like a sight glass like this one. So after you've run it, come back, check it per the manual to make sure that it's reading properly as well. I took the bike out for a long ride. I've got it good and warm. Per the manual, I'm now going to put it in neutral and let it run for one minute and then check the sight glass. It ran for one minute in neutral and now I'm going to check the sight glass. And if you look right in that slat, you can see that the oil is just short of the top, which is right where you want it to be according to the manual. So everything is good on oil levels and it's ready to just enjoy. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to learn more about how to enjoy amazing machines like this.